Hello aquaponics growers, look at what's behind me. Yes, 2023 and we have done it again. A new uh, trout breeding session, uh, excellent this year. Uh, the results are even better than last year. We have over 10,000 fish uh, hatched, uh, which is excellent, uh, in three different species. So we got uh, the brook trout, we got the rainbow trout and the golden trout. So here you have the golden, I still have golden on another setup and all the other species are on another setup. So I'm going to show you this in this video. I will explain you once again the process that I followed, not in big details. Uh, if you want to go further, if you want to breed your own trout, I highly recommend you to follow one of my training. Uh, the training about uh, breeding trout actually which is excellent and helped some people to breed trout this very year they were very happy and um, yeah now improving improving uh, you can reach a crazy number of trout that you can breed so not that you need uh, that many uh, fish in your aquaponic system but um, that be that can be useful if you have uh, let's say a dam and you want to uh, uh, put some fish in your dams. That will be uh, that will be great because here you can you can breed as many as you want basically. You just have to follow the step by step training, and um, yeah, just uh, replicate what I'm doing. Uh, I don't use any uh, sophisticated equipment, uh, as explained in other videos. Um, I used to work in a trout uh, hatchery, and I used to breed and uh, hatch uh, or mainly breed and sell eggs actually. Uh, by by huge quantity but we had a uh, very uh, good uh, equipment for that uh, very sophisticated uh, with expensive and also we used a lot of chemicals unfortunately um, to decrease the quantity the pressure of the of the disease that could grow on the eggs um, and um, yeah I always thought oh my god that would be so good if I could do this but in my backyard you know and uh, it's been a few years that now I'm able to breed my trout in aquaponics so aquaponics is great for that uh, not only you can renew the fish for your aquaponic system you know you don't have to buy new fingerlings every year but also if you have a dam if you have a, a big uh, pond whatever uh, you can add new fish every year and then you can fish them in the dam so that's that's great so personally, I see uh, three main uh, points of uh, improvement that we can have in aquaponics. The first one is to breed our own fish, so that's what we are discussing today. The second one is to limit um, the resources we take to grow our fish. Uh, because, okay, we are growing fish, we're going to eat them, uh, but how much do they cost us and how much do they cost to the environment? If you use a lot of water and a lot of electricity, it doesn't worth it. So I see a lot of people who are working with huge... Uh, water pump thing like this um, that consume a lot of electricity uh, I don't think it's really good okay it works for the purpose but what is the cost of your fish at the end of the day you know that's a question um, that I ask <laughs> and uh, that you should take in consideration when you start aquaponics um, and the third thing is of course the fish food because we have to feed our fish every day um, that's that's a lot of material that we give to the fish and uh, the conversion ratio is different to every species but for trout let's say it's around one so with one kilo of food you can grow one kilo of trout um, which seems excellent but to make one kilo of food you need some uh, fish meal and this fish meal is made out of fish that is caught in the ocean very often so it doesn't make much sense to catch some fish in the ocean to feed our trout to make trout then yeah um, so I think if we can find a way to create, to make our own fish food, that's great. And that's what I'm working on. Um, I've done a few experiments uh, in, the, in the past. Some of them have been documented on the channel, uh, Aquaponics Revolution. Um, one way was to use snails, another one is to use fly larvae. Uh, of course, if you're in a tropical area, uh, black soldier fly is an excellent uh, way to feed your fish. But here it's not the case, I'm in Melbourne, south of Australia. Uh, I mean, yeah, Victoria, <laughs> but in the south of Australia. Um, I believe uh, that uh, fly larvae can be good, uh, especially in winter when it doesn't smell too much. Anyway, I'm not going to develop this too much here. I, I might make another video to talk about it. Today we want to talk about fish breeding. I'm going to go through the process again, explain you how we do it and show you the result of this year's uh, uh, breeding season, which is 
amazing and also my students the one who followed the training last year this year they had their first breeding and some of them have been very successful as well so congratulations to you guys who followed the training and have been able to breed your own trout i think that's a massive achievement uh, it's so satisfying to be able to breed your own fish and to to basically produce your own uh, fish fingerlings material so let's go through the uh, fish breeding so how do we do that um, Look at those babies, how they, they turn. They look really, really cool, right? When they turn like this. Oh my God. I just want to dive in the little cage with them. <laughs> okay, so to breed our trout, what do we need? We need, uh, of course, breeders. Uh, I call them genitals. So we need male and female trout. And for the female, it needs to be two years old. Otherwise, before that, they don't produce any eggs. Uh, also you need males, so make sure you don't have uh, uh, all female population. Then what you will need is uh, to collect the eggs of the female, so you need to catch the fish. So here, as you can imagine, you see this is not the setup I normally work on, it's just because I'm moving, I'm moving back to France. Uh, I just had a daughter three weeks ago, so we are not going to move with a little baby, you know, not going to fly with a little baby so waiting for her to be a few months old but in the meantime i really wanted to have my fish with me i'm renting a new property and therefore uh, i thought okay a swimming pool would be a good option uh, to get the fish and to breed them that's why behind me you have this swimming pool uh, so i put the, the breeders or the genitals inside move them from my old place uh, as you can imagine when you move trout like this in a big pool I didn't have any specific uh, filtration in place, so I created one here that is a very interesting uh, way to convert a pool to a, a pond, basically, and to a, a fish pond, or even an aquaponic system. Um, unfortunately, this took a bit of time, you know, for the bacteria to grow on. It normally takes, let's say, a month, but I was in winter. So there was a bit of time where I was not able to feed the fish as much uh, as I wanted. Uh, and as you know, feeding the fish uh, when they come to breeding period is extremely important. So anyway, we did what we could and um, yeah, it didn't stop uh, the fish from producing some good, uh, good eggs. So I'm still very happy, but ideally you want to be, be sure that you feed your, your fish properly. Also then you need to catch them when it's breeding time. So you can again imagine how difficult it is to catch the fish in 16 cubic meters of water. Maybe 15 because the level is not to the top, but a lot of water, right? So it's quite tricky to catch the fish. Then uh, breeding them, so just uh, getting, collecting, harvesting uh, the eggs. So to do that, uh, it's just a matter of stripping the female. And uh, after that, you collect the sperm from the male, mix it, creates a fecundation. Um, then you need to place your eggs into uh, great conditions. So you try to replicate what's happening in nature. In nature, the trout, they want to place their eggs um, in the river uh, between gravels, where the egg can just uh, fall in the space between the gravel and be maintained and you need the uh, current, you know, some oxygen. So you try to replicate this. So for all those who follow my training, you know exactly the step-by-step -step process that we follow to uh, create an environment where we'll be able to incubate the eggs and then the larvae. So, so the egg then uh, is going to basically start to evolve and depending on the temperature of your water is going to go faster or, or, or or, or take a bit longer. Um, at 200 degree days, we're talking degree days, which is uh, basically the number of days multiplied by the temperature of your water. So if you say 200 degree days, that's 20 days at 10 degrees. Let, for example, that's 200 degree days. Um, at this stage, at 200 degree days, you start to see uh, the eye of the fish through the, through the eggs. So that's very, very nice, uh, uh, very cool to see, to watch. After that, um, you will, after 130 degree days, more than the 200, so 330, 340, uh, you will have the first uh, eggs that are going to hatch. And that's really, really cool. Uh, at this stage, uh, the larvae is not able to move much. 
uh, can move a bit, but it's not swimming. It spend most of, most of this time of his time uh, laying on the bottom and uh, basically digesting the food that is still in the belly. So there is the yolk that is still there, um, and the fish just survive for for weeks like this. So it's not really the fish yet. We call we, yeah we we talk about larvae at this stage, and then uh, the fish is going to come to the surface and breathe and it's going to blow his, his bladder and at this stage the, the fish can swim properly and feed. Uh, so all those stages uh, they seem very very simple but of course there are some very important things you need to take care of and one of the most um, uh, problematic uh, thing, one of the biggest challenges is to keep the, 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 the eggs alive uh, without fungus because there is a fungus uh, one of them is called saprolenia and it grows on the eggs and it's very hard uh, to keep them away. Uh, but following the process that I, uh, that I have and that I teach, uh, we are able to really uh, have a very good success rate and, um, and uh, hatch uh, a fair number of fish. So this year, as I said, uh, probably over 10,000 fish, uh, which is a lot for an aquaponic system. We definitely don't need that much. Uh, generally, in a classic aquaponic system, uh, you will need between 100 to 2,000 fish if you really have a robust system. Uh, but 10,000 is, is a bit of a lot. So uh, if you have a dam, that's great because you can grow the fish in your dam and fish them whenever you want. <laughs> and that's free, um, yeah, free fishing, let's say. So now I will show you a bit of footage of the different uh, um, um, fingerlings that I've been able to grow at this stage they are still small we can call them fry exactly what you can do in your place uh, uh, in aquaponics breeding your own fish there is nothing as rewarding as that uh, when it comes to aquaponics so have fun guys and uh, if you have any question of course uh, you can leave them uh, under the video but if you're interested um, uh, to learn more about this technique of growing your, uh, your, your own fish and especially breeding them I really uh, recommend you to join the community aquaponics revolution community there is a link into the description of this video and there you will be able to uh, have access to a newsletter where I send some advice, some update of what I am doing. And when I have step-by-step -step process that I want to share with you, that's how I communicate. So I see you there on the other side and uh, I wish you a lovely day and see you in the next video. Salut!